Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Clara. I also do not have any slides. Um, I am a second year PhD student at the Center for Quantum Technologies associated with the National University of Singapore. I'm originally from the US and I think like many of you, I'm also coming from a very multidisciplinary background. I started in electrical engineering, I did my master's in management, and then I found myself now doing experimental physics in a quantum computing lab. So. My presentation is on how we build a quantum computer. Why do we want to build a quantum computer? Before we get into that, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys a question. Why do we use computers? You guys can just shout it out. What do you use computers for for your research? Everything. <laughs> OK, OK, maybe simulations, right? If you ha or data processing, if you're collecting lots of data, like with this genome-wide association studies, managing that kind of database manually, it's much easier to do it with a program, right? You provide it the input of the database. You ask it how you want to process it. You look for a specific outcome. And then you are basically saving yourself lots of effort. It's making things more efficient to solve very, very complex problems. Now, what happens if your database becomes too large or the dynamics that you want to model become too complex? What would you turn toward? If you, all you had was a laptop, what would you go to next? Maybe your friend's gaming laptop? Some people, supercomputers, yes. Uh, very often, people go and turn towards supercomputers. But people have already identified problems that are relevant right now in our research that cannot be efficiently solved on supercomputers, right? So let's say, an example, we want to model how atoms are interacting. That is a very complex system with many complex variables. And modeling that efficiently just will take years, you know? So people started thinking, OK, how can we harness other spaces in science to solve this problem of efficient computation? And that's when people started thinking, hey, if we were trying to model these problems that have this certain structure, this structure looks quite similar to how quantum physics operates. So someone was saying, OK, I think Richard Feynman, if we want to solve problems that are quantum in nature, why don't we build a quantum computer? And so quantum computers have been demonstrated in theory to maybe outperform the efficiency of classical computers and solve problems that we otherwise would not have access to in a very efficient way with exponential speed up. And this really comes from harnessing the power of quantum physics. You may have heard the words like superposition or entanglement. Uh, you may have seen the theme in movies like Ant-Man or Everything Everywhere All at Once with multiverses. This idea of parallelization to process many possible uh, inputs all at once. You have heard about entanglement where you have this higher than classical correlation between two different systems. So we can harness these unique properties of quantum physics to then build a unique quantum computer to solve complex problems that we otherwise would not have access to. So I'm an experimentalist. I have an engineering background. How do we actually build such quantum computer? How do we visualize this? And I think there is a slide after this that shows me working on a quantum computer. Someone knows how to flip the slide. Oh, yeah. OK, so this is me. I was featured in Channel News Asia, which is a major news outlet here, working on a quantum computer. So maybe you all have seen these photos coming from IBM or Google. Um, you have these really fancy golden with, uh, machines with tons of wires. Um, and this is a little bit misleading, because most of this is just a refrigerator. <laughs> and actually, all the quantum circuits is happening like inside this metal shield. Uh, and so to give you a sense of scale, the quantum computer platform that I work on is with aluminum 3D cavities. So basically, just a cylinder drilled into a hole of aluminum. It fits into my hand, and we uh, make these quantum chips with these uh, specific devices called qubits, or quantum bits, uh, to interact with these 3D cavities. And so basically, the aspects that we're focusing on are is how do we store quantum information to do our computation? How do we control that information in a way that is predictable, in a way that is robust with minimizing errors? And how do we get that information out so we can actually have the results of our computation? All three of these branches are still being developed. They are um, still prone to lots and lots of errors, uh, which is part of the reason why we throw it into a refrigerator to get it close to absolute zero. We work at 10 millikelvin, so that's what minus 273 degrees Celsius. Uh, we all put it inside these shields to prevent it from electromagnetic radiation, right? We orient our chips in a way to minimize the impact from cosmic rays, you know? We're doing everything we can to minimize noise, um, but it's still a work in progress. But the reason why we still keep pushing is because we've seen massive leaps in the progress of making a very robust physical quantum computer uh, for the near future. Uh, thank you.